Musa Jakari of Delft University. No, Delft you know, plays a central role today, actually, because more people are connected in some way or other. Uh, she's a professor and chair of post-industrial design and director of design for interaction at the Faculty of Industrial Design Engineering at the Delft University of Technology. I mean, that's, that's tech, that's design, that's discovering um, what's going to happen next. And that she does that by leading the Connected Everyday Lab. Um, I'm going to ask her to join me on stage. Oh, there you are. So Hello. good to see you again. Good so to good see to see you again. Yeah. Yeah. I've been next time in, in real life. Um, very much looking forward to your talk. Uh, I'm going to give you the floor right away so that we don't miss any more minutes. So floor is yours. Okay. Thank you so much, Monique. I'm going to share my screen. And... Let's see, can you see it fine? It looks fine on my screen. So I'm going to just go ahead. Um, okay, so um, I actually very happy to be here, though not on, on in person, um, to talk about this project. Over the, over the years I had uh, the opportunity and the pleasure to speak at things gone about projects I have engaged as a designer, as a design researcher in the space of responsible technology. But today, instead, I would like to talk to you about an initiative uh, that I'm leading together with an amazing stellar group of people and that we just launched this year. That's called the Decode Network. And um, Decode is born from all of these projects that we all engaged in this um, a network of people that came together and it's born from the realization that the challenges that we have ahead are really actually bigger than what we can learn from a single project. Um, if we consider the present moment of crisis of design, it has become quite clear that we don't really know how to design in the decentralized context of the current platform economy, when from designing for interaction with one product service system, we move to many interconnected products and services that cut horizontally across spheres of life that were previously separated. And so as designers, we are not a kit to understand and to account for this new interplay between people and technology and to guide the broad effects of this interplay that takes place in our everyday lives towards digital futures that are actually inclusive and sustainable. What also has become apparent is that most often designers are not in the position to do much about it. As an expression of this moment of crisis, we all have witnessed in recent years a proliferation of design manifestos and lists of principles for a good and a more humane technology. But I just can't help, we all came together with the feeling that somehow design has lost its grip. The legislative frameworks that are being developed for Explicitly incorporating ethics into policies and making everyday design processes accountable do not tackle the urgent need for a fundamental rethinking of design as a site of practice. Imagining better futures cannot be an afterthought, it has to be a proactive effort. But the industrial revolution is over, we are in the midst of a profound digital transformation of society and design is not what it used to be. Inclusive and sustainable digital futures will require a fundamentally new design competence and practice. And for this, we need to explicitly position the crafting of agency as foundational to digital design today as it was once the notion of function to industrial design. And this agency, this designing with that Simone was 
um, also in his talk, referring to, though in a very particular context, this designing with other humans and non-human entities alike next to each other is not necessarily something that we can control or can we can prototype in a traditional sense, but something we must learn to seed and to care for. And that is why early this year we have launched Decode to rethink fundamentally design in the context of a digital transformation and to prototype how future professional design roles and practices that are meant to uphold anticipatory, responsible and deliberative innovation approaches, how these might look like, including what knowledge and skills are needed to support them. So what DECODE is, is a European research network and a PhD program aimed to develop a, this fundamentally new design competence for the digital transformation of society. At its heart is a cohort of 15 fellows, I at least saw one of them uh, in, the, in the group of people attending today, um, which is 15 people hailing from really unique career trajectories in industry and creative practices, the crossing of design, engineering, social sciences and humanities. Overall, in addition to including the 15 uh, DECODE fellows, DECODE involves 40 researchers from 20 different countries, um, cutting across different disciplines and fields of design. In the network we in, in, in the program that we are um, promoting, we integrate five big challenges. You can see them here in the slide, from human algorithm relations to decentralized interactions, to data-driven value creation and digital sovereignty, with the goal to open design pathways to new practices in design and inclusive and sustainable digital futures. Our aim is to develop new knowledge and skills to advance design competence at each of these levels. What you see here in this diagram is a visualization of what we encapsulated as the challenges of the previous slide. And what we want to do is to push the envelope um, at each of these levels, knowing that some work has been done at the algorithmic level when it comes to principal engineering of, um, of AI and machine learning. Work is being done at, at the policy level, but there is a big gap in understanding decentralized interactions. Uh, there's a big gap in understanding how the multi-sided aspects of value creation across these decentralized networks. And so we want to push the lender up um, at each of these levels, but more importantly, across these levels, learning about the implications that a design decision taken at one level can have on all the other levels. And to be able to do this, we need to focus on relations and not just interactions. We must develop a design competence that moves past the narrow focus on one-to-one -one user experiences and all design ideas, user product and functionality. We need a competence and a practice that instead of optimizing the expression of this, an expression of this one-to-one -one relationship between a technology and its user or its users, it is instead conceptually, methodologically, and ethically concerned with how to manage, how to present, and how to negotiate all of these different relations in parallel without one particular relation being privileged above all others and at all times. And how we intend to do this is um, particularly uh, not only the individual projects, but through pro teams, which are the signature of the code. And what they are are researchers, the 15 that you saw, with 
coming in with different disciplinary backgrounds and dedicated to different challenges, the one you saw. Coming together and being deployed iteratively in real world settings to rehearse in practice to actually really prototype how these different levels of design are to be considered and to be integrated in the organization of practice, of future design practices. And how that needs to be done if we want to uphold those anticipatory, responsible, and deliberative innovation approaches and be in a position to actually be effective. So we'll deploy the first product teams early next year, working in collaboration with partners from industry, government, and civil society to really cut across different domains and experiment with this idea of design-led ecosystems for the digital transformation of society. Um, something else I want to say is that all of that is really nice and good, super important, um, but we cannot really seek better futures if we don't take inclusion and diversity seriously. Engaging a, a plurality of intersectional, cultural and societal perspectives and integrating heterogeneous values, knowledge traditions and real world cases is part of the decode ethics, is part of the program and how we will um, push it forward and also intrinsically part of the very composition of our network. We really went to great lengths to uphold to this principle and, and bring in diverse perspectives in the cohort of fellows. You can see here where all the applications came from. Um, in the mix of partners, universities, um, startups, larger companies, um, research institutes with large ecologies, broader ecologies of um, stakeholders in both the private and public sector. In the mix of supervisors and advisors, uh, you probably can recognize some of them. I think I saw your name, Heather. So you're there in the picture and probably in the room too. Um, the expertise of this um, group really extending from interaction, service and systemic design, to science and technology studies, to design anthropology, data science and engineering and artificial intelligence. And we also went to great lengths, again, to uphold to this idea of inclusion and diversity in making space for creative collaboration between the code researchers and master students within our graduation labs. And I think Minu, it's, um, I believe, also in one of the rooms exhibiting her work. Um, she's an example of one of the first master students that came out of our labs um, with the work on bridging intentionality gaps between end users and service providers in AI powered energy systems, working here with Deus and uh, Datenfall in the Netherlands. And Nick is another student that's working um, now with Heather and, and myself and another colleague of mine, Liana Simonset on alternative visions for consent practices and disclosure interactions, working with Open Future, with Ale Tarkovsky and Flickr as a case study. And if I'm not mistaken, Anne will do a graduation project through an internship with Simone. So maybe we will keep talking about these things. Um, so that's it. Um, just a really super quick overview um, of Decode. I hope you will follow our activities and engage with us in the coming four years. Our first annual showcase will be in June. So hopefully by then we will be able to meet in real life, um, hoping to rethink design together. Thank you. Thank you so much. What a huge, ambitious program. Um, I, we have to make this really super short because we have such a, you know, the, the students are waiting how they already started pitches. Uh, one question. You actually put the ethics at the heart of the whole, you know, ecosystem that you are building for design. And you also 
touch so many different areas. This is something that it will be developed and done by by a new generation of designers and people working. Do you, well, what is your impression of this new generation? Is the, the ethical part and the building new ecosystem part something they are super interested in? And we That's have completely new people yeah. right, to, to want right. to do this. I don't know. I was just talking to Andrea before and I was telling her that I was almost moved by the number of applications we received and we spoke to many of them and to so many of them coming from all of these different parts in the world this seemed important it really seemed a, a big drive many of them also in our cohort come from years in industry with a very strong motivation to just change things and the, the feeling that you cannot really do it from inside, that you need to develop a different kind of perspective first and try to rehearse and prototype something different. And only then perhaps you can bring it back or scale it up. So it is a really ambitious project. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and you, you want to build whole new ecosystems as well. It's not just the design, you want to change the world. I mean, well, we want need the energy of young people to be believe that we can change all this, right? Or we can at least start changing the way in which we think about what we should be doing. Yeah. Yeah, let me just check if there is a quick question at the end. I think we'll write, keep it here, but ask everybody to connect and, and, and look for the results of this program as well. And uh, so thank you so much for all those involved to uh, set this up. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, Monique. Bye.